If you, hey, if you, if you drop fair dinkum, people will lose their mind. What's the word? Fair dinkum. Fair dinkum. Yeah, that's it. Not really sure 100% what it means, but you can throw it in anywhere and it works. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm being joined now by my new favorite athlete on planet Earth. He's from Texas, but right now he's the Coxzilla of Australia. <laughs> Of the Collingwood Magpie, six foot ten, Mason Cox. Yeah! 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 Oh, hell of an intro. I like it. I like it. You deserve it, man. You're American playing in the AFL, which is the Aussie Rules Football League, which I have fallen in love with for the last week. I had a one-night stand. I watched a game. I tweeted about it. Australia reached out to me. I have fallen in love with it in a rabbit hole. And in turn, I have learned about this American from Texas who is an Okie State basketball player who is now a monster on the pitch down in Australia, and that would be you. Am I accurate in saying that? That's pretty accurate. From a broadcast walk-on to playing AFL at Collingwood and AFL, I'd say it's going pretty well. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about that broke-ass walk-on. You were six foot ten. Wikipedia says you're six foot eleven, so you're a very tall man. I would assume. Yep. I would assume you're obviously a basketball player at Okie State. At six foot ten, I would think that you wouldn't be a walk-on anywhere because you lift your arm, you dunk a basketball. You would think in most cases. That's what you think. But I played soccer growing up, and then I, I walked onto the basketball team. I was, so, I was so trash, I actually didn't even sit on the front bench. I sat on the bench <laughs> behind the bench uh, with the trainers because I couldn't actually get onto the proper bench until we had a few guys that got injured. And then the coach was like, well, stuff it. We're going to have to play them. So they threw me in, did really well. I got two or three rebounds, chunked it back out. And then uh, D-Dub up Joel and beat for about a, a whole minute. Ooh. Shut us down. Oh, yeah. okay. Claim to fame, claim to fame. That's, uh, that's about the highlight of my college career for basketball. <laughs> okay, uh, how long have you been in Australia? How long ago was that walk on to Okie State to play basketball? Walked on probably eight years ago, eight or nine years ago. I've been in Aussie for six years. Just got my citizenship, so I'm dual citizen now. Yeah, that's why I got this terrible accent. I well, don't really know if you can understand me. Well, that's what we were going to say. How long, because mm. whenever I call somewhere and an English person answers, I immediately start speaking with an English accent. Like, uh, yes, yes. Hello, this is uh, Target. How's it going? And I immediately go back, well, hello. This is, you know, like I just can't help but do it. Did that happen with you getting in Australia? I'm sure you have a southern accent. When you go to Australia, you pick up an Australian southern accent. How quickly did you become uh, an, an Australian accent having human being? No, it, it was it was about two years in. I think you start you start saying mate. And once you start saying mate, you just, you've lost it. You've just really gone down that rabbit hole. And um, I'll start saying mate and good on you and good day. If you say if you start saying good day, man, you, you, you're totally Aussie now and you just you've lost all kind of American twang to it. What was the word that you said at the beginning of this thing that I should say in the middle of this? And oh, be- fair dinkum. If you can get fair dinkum thrown into a sentence, Australians will lose their effing mind. <laughs> Well, the thing about that fair dankum game was when I was. <laughs> <laughs> is that I right? That's, uh, that'll work. That'll work. That that's, works? That's fair dankum, pretty true. Okay, that fair dankum game that I watched, um, whenever, yeah. whenever you were in Oklahoma State playing basketball <clears throat> and in Texas playing soccer growing up, did you yeah. know of this game that I had no idea about until a week ago? Did you know about the sport? How did this all come to be as this Oklahoma State basketball player who was so bad he was on the backup backup spot, then he gets in a game, beats up Joel Embiid a little bit, and then he ends up in Australia, I would assume, shortly after you left Oklahoma State. Is that how it goes? Yeah, so I played, well, I played the March Madness, and then um, from that they just said, oh, okay, you're athletically gifted. Found, like, I had no idea what AFL was either. I had to Google it. Went down the YouTube rabbit hole, same thing you did, you know, and it was Australia's, Australian rules football's biggest hits, and it was just a bunch of guys getting knocked out. I was like, yeah, cool, I'm in. Uh, You sold me. So I went over to Australia, went over to LA, did a combine there, went over to Australia, and then from there they were like, hey man, you wanna uh, wanna come on out here and ditch your other job and then come work out for a living? And I was like, yeah, I think that'll do. That seems like the right decision. So you go to LA, Oklahoma State to LA for a combine to Australia. They say you want yeah. to get your other job, you want to do this full time. Did you end up at Collingwood at the beginning? Is this your first team, last team, or have you bounced around a little bit? No, nah, so I've just gone to one team. So Colling- I've signed two contracts with the same team for three years each. So I'm on my last year of my second contract. Um, so yeah, so I've had a few other teams that were interested at the beginning and then chose Collingwood. They're the biggest club. 
um, and some of the best history and stuff, and uh, a lot of, a lot better resources than probably other clubs. So we've got uh, we're right in the dead center of Melbourne in the city, uh, right next to the Australian Open, uh, right next to the MCG is where we play. It holds like a hundred thousand people. It's just insanity, um, and it's just all right there. So it's it's good location. It's a great club, um, and you got to get on it, man. I got to get you a Magpies uh, membership. Okay, a lot of people are saying they want to get me a membership to different places. What the hell is a membership? That's like a season ticket thing, or is that one of those sleeveless jerseys that you guys <laughs> <laughs> You can get both of those. Um, membership is like a, uh, it's like you buy at least one ticket for a game, or you just support the club. So you'll get kind of like a membership pack. Uh, it's the same thing as just saying you're a supporter or um, a fan of a club for the year. Uh, so you do that and you become a member um, and then you can get like a little sticker you put on the back of your car and uh, maybe a scarf and a few other things. So we play in winter because y'all are going into summer, but we've got, we've got seasons flip flop. So we're going into winter now. So everyone plays in the middle of um, the cold weather and everything else. So people will wear scarves to games. Well, I need to get a scarf stat. I mean, everybody knows me, knows I'm a scarf guy. Huge. Uh, yep. scarf, scarf guy. Yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of my thing. Covered his neck with these chins. The, the thought though of you were going into your second contract with a professional club. And now, granted, this is me being very ignorant. Not even – I've heard of the sport because a lot of Aussie rules players have come over and punted in America, right? So I had heard of the yeah. sport. I always assumed it was rugby. I didn't enjoy rugby whenever I was a child watching it. So I kind of just kind of categorized those two together. Like, okay, rugby and Aussie rules are the same thing. And then when I watch that game, it's very different than rugby. It is a very different game. It's much more high pace. There's a lot more happening. It's a lot more kicking, running, jumping. I mean, there's a lot going on in Aussie. It's very different how have i not heard about an american though who's six foot ten going to australia and becoming like a professional a, a very good professional player i don't know how in the sports media world i feel like we are an ignorant group of humans for not knowing about this how is this not happening how are you not a mainstream topic of an american done good down under uh, it's look most people like you said most people think it's rugby so we've got to we've got to convince people and tell people that AFL is a totally different sport. It's way better. Like it's, I always say to people, it's the best sport you've never heard of. And it's just insane, man. Like you said, people need people on the back of the head. People jump on people's shoulders, taking catches and stuff, and kicking it 60, 70 yards. It's, it's insanity. Like it is organized chaos to a T. And it's something I think Americans would love, but they have no idea it's different from rugby. So like you said, man, like you, you went and watched one game, went down to the YouTube rabbit hole, and now you're convinced. Let's, can we go through a couple uh, YouTube clips of you explaining what the hell is going? Because I think I get it. Like I, I, I did a two minute breakdown of what I thought the game was, and I only do that because of watching people celebrate what's good, right? So, <laughs> like watching that game, I would see somebody kick it through the post, and then I would see people celebrate. I'm like, okay, so that's obviously that is a goal of the that's team. Yeah, yeah, that is a goal. And then I would see these people go up on top of each other's backs, which I assume at six foot ten, that made you a big time recruit for these players. If you can get up there and snag that thing, like Randy Moss, we got a couple yeah. of your clips. Explain to us what the hell is going on, please, at this moment, will you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. play. It. All right. So this is Mason Cox, two goals, round five, 2019. Okay, so pause that, Z. All right. That punch right there, that is the only, that's the it's only. It's a handball, a handball. So you, you punch the ball, you hold it with one hand, you punch it with the other. So you got this thing right here. I've actually brought one for you. You got that, and you punch it with one to the other, to the other player. Hold on. So you can't, so that's like, that's playing on. So you can just, the, the game doesn't stop. You can do that, and you keep the ball moving forward. So that's called a handball. Okay, so you you can punch that. I have a Sharon here as well. We're actually running to get that. You can punch that thing forward, backward. You can do absolutely anything, but that's the only mode of uh, passing that you can do with your hands is a, is a handball with a punch? Yeah, yeah, with your hands. You can kick it to each other, but you can't, you, like, you can handball it, which is, yeah, you punch the ball. And some people can punch it, like, 20, 30 meters, man. 20, 30 yards, whatever you want to say. It's just, like... It's ridiculous. Not a lot of people wearing gloves, by the way. I would assume in a big catch, nah. in a catching game, you would wear gloves. We'll get to that whenever it comes to the mark, I believe, is which yep. mossing somebody is called a mark, oh, by the way. <laughs> so, so whenever you punch this thing, though, you can't do like a ref toss. You can't do that. The only nah. way you have to hit it with your other hand. You have to hit it with the other hand. If you don't hit it with the other hand, it's a free kick for the other team. Oh, don't want that. Yeah. You, you don't nah. want that. You don't want that. Nah. Okay, so as this person's running here, he punches it to his other friend. You can punch it forward. You can punch it backward. You can do whatever. Can that person that's guarding him right there spear him? Yeah, spear him as much as he wants. Yep. Free game. Free game. 
How long after the punch are you allowed to hit the guy? Does it have to be like respectable, like he was at least trying to get him while he had the ball? It has to be close enough where he's making an attempt to it, yeah. Okay. But you could like if he's not looking, you go straight through him. Okay. How many people are on the field? There's 18, so there's 22 that play, 18 on the field for each team. So 36 people on the field at once. Okay. And you get your head wrapped around that. And it's like, maybe it's 200 yards long um, and then about 150 yards wide. Yeah. It, I think it, it's huge. It appeared as if it was a racetrack <laughs> with how big yeah. the field. It was the biggest playing for surface I've ever seen. Okay. So this guy who's a teammate of yours, I would assume, just punched it to this other guy here. Yep. Okay. And he just kicked it. And you catch that right there. Okay, pause it, Zito. Yeah. So whenever a kick pass happens, the ref blows a wh- Like, the ref is blowing a whistle a good six, seven times a minute at some clips because every time you kick pass, they blow the whistle and stop the game. What is that? What is happening? So if, you, if you're within – if you can kick a goal between the big sticks, right, then you get 30 seconds to do that. So if you, if you get, you know, within that 50-yard you know, arc or 50-meter arc that they have out there, then you get to kick for goal. So you've got 30 seconds. Everyone's got this weird routine they go through. So some people will go, you know, 40 steps back and then run up and kick. Some people will go 10 steps back. Some people will go – you just have to keep in line with the goals. So there's no, there's no rules and regulations to, to how you go about before you kick it, uh, kick for a goal. But if you're in regular play, so if you're, like, far away from your goals to be able to score – then if you kick it and someone else you know catches it or as we call it marks it, then you get ten seconds. It's about six to ten seconds I want to say to kick to the next person or handball it off to another person. And the, the yeah. other team cannot hit you in that six to ten seconds or in that thirty second after you catch the kick pass. Yeah, no one can no one can touch you. No one can yeah go within your like space of being able to kick the ball. So what I've learned from watching the game quickly is the strategy is. Obviously, you're trying to move it down the field, and then somebody boots it into that 50-yard perimeter spot, and then it's just yep. like jackpot game back in the pool where people have, <laughs> have, to, go up, to, have to go up and get it. 500. And, 500. Yeah, 500. And, yeah, and then if you go up and get it, the, the by the way, a massive celebration happens whenever this catch happens. You might as well be catching a touchdown. The ref blows a whistle. <laughs> then there's a little bit of a celebration. The person gets up, wipes himself off, they have 30 seconds now, I'm learning. And then yeah. I think you do what you're about to do right here, I'd assume. Is that accurate? Yeah. All right, play that, Z. So Sometimes you, they're called goal of snag. Okay, so this, this is your mark little right little here. Little. Bang, thank you very much. Excuse me, get the hell out of my way. I was wide open. <laughs> you're about 40 feet taller than that guy. Are you the tallest person in the league? I'm the tallest person to ever play AFL. That's wow. what I'm talking about. The American comes yeah. in big cockzilla. So now you had 30 seconds here. That guy's standing in front of you walking back and forth. Can he block that shit? No, nah, so he's got a line where I mark the ball. He can't go past that, but he can do whatever he pleases. But like behind that line, so he can sit there. He can flash you with his chest. He can do. He can turn around. He can a wave his arms. He can do whatever he wants to try to distract you to make sure you don't kick that oh, goal. A psych out. He can do a psych yeah. out. That is trash un- talk is like encouraged to do this. Wow. Wow. You bring in a good psych. Like if a guy is a good psych outer, like we have a guy in here, MVB, his name's Billy. He's the best psych out king of all time. He dumped an entire tub of G fuel on his head last time whenever we were playing basketball. So that person is just talking massive amounts of shit to you. I would assume because you're an American, the things that you're getting is next level. Yeah, pretty much. He talks as much shit saying I'm a terrible player, uh, anything else along those lines. And my return is always, I've been playing this game for, you know, four or five years. You've been playing your whole life. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm about to, excuse me while I hit this putt and you, you drain that kick through, you, you drain it, you drain it through those two bigger poles in the middle. That's worth six yeah. points, right? That's the ultimate goal of the game right there. Yeah. So six points between the two big sticks and then one point between the big stick and the small stick on the outside. Okay. Run that back. I assume this is going to be a replay of this kick. Yeah. So you see there's, there's, a, there's a two big sticks in the middle in between those are six points. If you hit a stick, it's only one point. And if you make it between a big stick and a little stick, it's only one point. That little guy down there, if he was able to jump up and swat that thing, that would have counted yeah. as no good? Just one point, yeah. Oh, so if he jumps up and hits that, it only counts as one? Yeah, as long as it's, it hasn't gone over the uh, the line, uh, the goal line, if he swats that over, it's only one point, and then they kick it in from that little goal square uh, in front of the goals. Okay, so if that so guy, if, if that guy on the other team, though, jumps up and catches that before it goes through, that's good defense? That's great defense, yeah. Oh, what if he jumps on that guy's back and then another guy's back and then they catch it? Is that good defense? 
<laughs> I'm trying to get someone to do the tower on the goal line to try to take a mark, but I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure it's allowed, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you just scored six points there. You did a mark. We learned what a handball is and the kick pass is. Let's watch the yeah. other goal that you hit in this game. This is such a fascinating sport because it's wide open. It is wide open. They're, they're running. How much are you running a game? Eight, ten miles? You're running about nine, ten. I'll run, I'll run, I'm the biggest guy on the field, and I'll run nine, nine and a half miles. Oh, my. What is your you position? You get some of the shorter guys to run 10, 11, maybe 12 miles. Okay, so you being that big guy right there, it seems as if you dropped it, you don't have to complete the catch. Is that a big deal in Australia? You don't have to complete the catch there just because you had it and it got swatted out. How does that play there? Nah, so if someone's like, if someone comes over and just like smacks your arms while you have the ball in your hands, right? So like, let's say you go and you take a, you take a catch or a mark and then someone chops your arms and just puts as much force through your arms and you drop the ball, then that's a free kick for whoever um, was marking it. So you have to try to at least get the ball. Okay. Did you, how did does you- Does that make sense? Yeah, how did you- because I feel like the guys that get stepped on, because in these marks, they'll jump up on people's backs with their knees yeah. and then propel themselves up to catch, right? So, like, it is – there's some catches – marks, I'm sorry, that I've seen. They're called uh, sp uh, ah. sp spec speckies. Speckies. Because speckies. <laughs> yeah. they're spectacular marks. Is that accurate? <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're spectacular marks. I'll, I don't know if that's where this, or, or, or this, the word specky originated, but – I'll say that'll, that'll do. In my internet search, in the hole that I was in, I, I believe it was called Specky from Spectacular. But they would jump up. On, they would jump up onto people's backs, like jump up, knee on dude's back, propel himself up and catch it. Like that's happening, and that is not a yeah. foul at all. That is actually like encouraged. That's one of the most exciting plays you can do. Yeah, it's insane. Like guys, guys get both knees, like one knee on each shoulder. And then sit on a guy, sit there for about like a, like two or three seconds on his shoulders, and then take the catch or the mark, and then come down. And they, it's just, it's almost an embarrassment for the guy underneath you. It's, yeah. it's getting dunked on essentially. Posterized. In AFL. Yeah, you're getting teabagged, posterized, <laughs> everything yeah. you don't want to get right there. But that catch. You don't want to be the guy underneath. How, how do they teach? Uh, so is it like an out, <laughs> like when you're an outfielder and you got to catch a fly ball, it's always your, your back coming forward. So whenever yeah. you, whenever I assume they have you up front, is that or you're a midfielder? You're not. A, are you up front or no? I play both. So I play forward and I play midfield. Because in my little tiny knowledge of the game, you being six foot ten down there by the big poles down there, if I'm kicking a ball, okay, I just got to put it up in the area. We got a coxzilla down there who's just going to hop up on somebody's <laughs> back. I would assume you're a weapon in that particular. The tallest human in the history of the sport. But how do, how do the defenders not know that somebody's about to come up on their back? It always feels like the defenders have no idea it's coming. And it's like, well, what do you think is going to happen, pal? There's 36 of you on this field at the moment. There's somebody's going to climb your back. Is there techniques to that and reading it and judging it? Is that just a misjudge by the defender? Yeah, they've got, they've got specky bags here you can practice on. that are literally just a bag on someone's shoulder you can jump on. We should get you on one of those. Yeah, we're we buying one. Of those. Yeah, we're buying, one. We're buying one right now. Literally, that thing's getting sent to the office <laughs> as we speak right now. <laughs> they got specky bags people will practice on. But if you're a defender and you go underneath the ball and like you realize the ball is going over your head, so you kind of backpedal, that's just to – you're just asking to get jumped on. And it's, um, it's, it's the greatest feeling as a forward knowing – that someone's in that position where you can just jump on their head and just launch into someone's back of their head and just I've split open a few heads in my day and gave stitches to people just with the back of my knee. So it's it's a good feeling. And I mean, one of the things in <laughs> AFL is you can't actually stop the game usually unless you've broken a leg or something. You have to walk off the field. So they have a stretcher only for if you get pretty much knocked out, which happens pretty often or if you break a leg or something like that then or do an acl then you can go off on a stretcher but if you do a hamstring you do a calf or you know you hurt your hand or whatever it is you still got to run all the way to where the interchange is or the boundary they call it and go and select your player to go sub in for yourself it feels as if this is like an old school tradition game by the way it feels like there's yeah. a lot there's a lot of like i don't want to say um like unwritten rules, but it feels like there's this is like an old school traditional game where you respect each other. There's no names on the back of the jerseys. It's like a, yeah. there's no, I mean, I, I would assume it can get a little bit, 
I would assume people want to fight each oh. other, but but it feels as yeah, if, all the time. Yeah, it feels as if it's like an old school type game. That's why I think Americans would love it so much. It feels like it's a a ground and pound, blue collar, rust belt, rust belt, <laughs> gritty game. It feels like with these spectacular moments that just pop up out of nowhere, and then these massive hits that come as well. It's insane. I mean, like there really is. There's minimal rules. Like you can sit there and you can elbow people. You can. You know, do as much body work as you want to really just wear someone down. Like, there's no, there's no too aggressive, I guess, in the AFL. There's no such thing. Like, you can really kind of bash into people. And I'm telling you, there's scuffles that full teams will get into it and stuff. And it just, it's normal, man. It's not really out of the, I don't know, people don't find it that crazy for someone to go in and jumper punch someone, which is like you grab the jumper and then you, you kind of do this and then you punch them in the chest. And it's a way of, not being able to punch someone, but still being able to punch someone <laughs> um, and get away with it. So it's like I said, man, it's absolutely crazy. There's no real rules. Like there's a few little limitations here and there, but whenever it comes to how aggressive you can be and if you can knock someone out, you try to you try to hurt the opponent, to be honest. That's one of your main goals. <laughs> Mason, <laughs> Mason, you've fallen completely in love with this sport, I'd assume. Yeah, to say the least, it's um, my man. It's allowed me to have some pretty cool experiences, man. I've got to show Joe Biden what AFL is. Sat with him during a game, which was crazy. Uh, got to even hit golf balls with Tiger Woods a couple months ago. Whenever the presidents come came here, there's some I... crazy experiences that I've been able to do because of AFL, and it's allowed me to be able to be the token American out in Melbourne. So anytime Americans come around or whoever it is, sometimes I'll get a call up, be like, "Hey, you want to go have you know." shoot golf balls and stuff or hit golf balls with Tiger Woods. And I'm a terrible golfer. <laughs> I'm a terrible golfer, but they still ask me. You're six foot ten. I mean, yeah. that's I mean, st- it's like a putt-putt, you know, like a putt-putt little golf club. I mean, it's, like, it's nothing really even serious. But, look, I will say this about that experience. I got it on the barge once out of two tries, and Tiger got it duck egg. Oh, oh, so you're better than Tiger Woods. So that's good. I mean, I, would- I didn't say it, but I'm really hinting at it. <laughs> It sure, sure sounded like you said it down there. Um, how is life in Australia? Are you now, by the way, I've only seen one actual game and I've seen your highlights, but I feel yeah. like, I feel like the Australians respect you as a person. And that's probably a massive ordeal. And that was probably not easy to come by. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Australians are quite unique in their culture. I mean, AFL has been around for like 130, 140 years. Like it's, it's been around longer than NFL. So you talk about something that's a bit traditional and everything else. Like these people absolutely love it. But to have a guy come in who's A, never heard of the sport, um, B, never been to Melbourne and never even heard of Melbourne really. And then to come over here and, and be somewhat successful and play um, AFL games, the, the unique kind of feel good story. So I feel like a lot of Australians just kind of bought into it, uh, supported me. And I'm telling you one thing that Aussies love is Americans. They come over here all the time. They go and do the LA, they do the Vegas, they party harder than anyone I've ever met in my life. And um, I'm telling you, dude, they absolutely love the American nightlife. I love Australia. I've only learned a little bit about Australia. And that's yeah. through the punters that I've seen. And obviously, Steve Irwin was a legend in every home <laughs> in America growing up. RIP, RIP. RIP, RIP. Hey, by the way, moment of silence, please. Moment's gone. You just became a dual citizen. You should be, I mean, have a little bit more respect for Steve Irwin right there. <laughs> Unbelievable Jeez. right there, Mason Cox. Um, I, I do feel like that is, uh, that'd be a tough thing to do. I think it's, a, yeah, 130 years old or something like that. And what mm. did you say? You're not the first American. Are you the, f- how many Americans have played in the AFL? So it's played AFL games. There's only one other one named Jason Holmes who played about four or five years ago. He played a few games for St. Kilda. Um, and then I've played 50 odd games, something like that. So they do like how successful your career is, is how many games you've played throughout your career. Uh, so if you make like a hundred games, you had a really successful career. Some guys have played up to 300, 400 games. And that's just insane to think that some people can make it to that. Cause it is such a brutal sport. You can imagine there's what 20, uh, if, you, if you go all the way, there's like 26 games in a season. So you do that, you know, you play five years, you, you get, you know, get to a hundred and it's a massive accomplishment. Who's the uh, who's the Tom Brady over there? I've heard this Dusty Martin guy is a legend. Yeah. I, there's a picture he's of him a, on the internet just like this right here yeah. with yeah. hats everywhere. I've heard he's the guy. Is he the guy? He is the uh, he's one of the best players in the league to say the least. He's uh, he's the well, Richmond's won two of the last championships, what we call his premierships, 
Um, and Dusty's been one of their best players. So he's just like a freak athlete. Um, zero Fs given. I don't know if you can say <laughs> the word, but zero Fs given. Like just just goes out and dominates whoever the hell he plays against. Uh, the guy's just a he's a game breaker as far as whenever it comes to that kind of stuff. And the guy's just an absolute legend. What is the Super Bowl called over there? Premiership. Premiership. And what's yeah. the, what's we, the- the the day is called a grand the grand grand final day is what the actual day is called. So we final. so it's like our Super Bowl is grand final day. We have to um, and there's a hundred thousand people that go to that game, and then there's a whole like they take off the Friday. So the game's on a Saturday, and this is I'll talk about Aussies love to party. They'll take off a Friday just to start the party early. So Friday is actually a public holiday in Melbourne because no one shows up to work sober. So <laughs> taking the Friday off and said, you know what, we're going to make this a national holiday because we can't get any work done for this weekend. Oh, my God. Why does an America do oh, this? The Monday after the Super Bowl. That's what it should be. Exactly. I don't know why you guys don't take off Monday. We don't, you're a dull citizen. You golf with Biden and Tiger. Why don't you fucking <laughs> run, run it up the line, Cox? <laughs> I'll do what I can. I'll see what I can. Uh, NFL is the number one most popular sport in America. Where does AFL rank in Australia as far as popular sports? Oh, uh, yeah, it's number one, 100%. It's the biggest sport in Australia. So um, it's by far, like I said, you'll have our club will average 60 to 70,000 fans in a game. Um, and sometimes it's actually the most, uh, oh, I guess it, it sells the most tickets out of any sport in the world for that week. Do you so think, you can imagine how many people actually follow this. It's pretty crazy. Well, I've, I've been learning, by the way. I've been, every morning I wake up and it's just a whole new set of tweets from Aussies. There's one guy saying that I lied and I bamboozled all of Australia into this moment. I'm like, all right, you're the worst. Dude. And everybody else has been awesome. It, it's, I'm very excited to learn about the Australian culture, to be honest. With you. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped up about it because all I know is Flight of the Concords, which is big New Zealand show. I mean, <laughs> big New Zealand show. I didn't know enough. Totally different. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, hey, we gotta get you down here. We gotta get you to a game. There's um, Anzac Day, Grand Final Day. There's a few different games. Once we get back online, we're gonna get you down to. We'll try to figure something out. I need a scarf. How long um, would it take for me, cardio wise, to get in shape for a quarter of a game? A quarter of a game. Um. Probably, how, how, how out of shape are you at the moment? It's probably the better question. Well, considering the fact what you just ate from McDonald's probably gives me a good baseline. Yeah, <laughs> 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 at the moment. Um, yeah, it take you uh, three or four months in how, training. How long, did, in how, long training. Did, how long did it take you to get into shape? Like when you got there, how many years after you had got there had you been placed in a game and, instead of just training and stuff like that? So my first game I ever played was a year and a half into starting to play. So my first game I played in front of 85,000 people uh, a year and a half into knowing what the hell the sport was uh, on Anzac Day, which is the second biggest game of the year. So uh, pretty intense and crazy scenario. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And it was uh, – the craziest moment probably of my life. What are the positions? Is it like lacrosse where some people are allowed to go past half or is there like defense, midfield, and offense that can go wherever? What are the positions? So you got so you got four line, midfield, and defenders. Same as really any other sport. And then there's six people at each kind of um, section. But you can go anywhere. The, the field's wide open. Like you can play any single position you want. So I'll play forward and then I'll go into the midfield and I'll play what's called ruck. And Ruck's the biggest guy on the ground. He just taps it to all the skillful players. So, I mean, like, you can play Ruck, man. You can not know how to kick a footy. And if you're tall enough and big enough, you can sit there and just tap it down to the little fellas, let them do all the skillful stuff, and then you just take huge clunks or marks around the around the ground and then just give it to them, and they do all the stuff that you can't do. That sounds like the right play. What, what's called <laughs> Ruck? I'm a Rook? A Ruckman. Ruckman. You're damn right I am. I'm a Ruckman. <laughs> A rock. I want to bomb. I want to bomb. I want to sit back and bomb balls with my leg into the bl- into the blender. Yeah, torpedo him from like sixty meters out, or sixty yards out. This, How far can you kick? Forever. This thing. Now. I I feel like this thing could go forever. I honestly, I, I saw a couple of torpedo punts happening. By the way, that's the yep. only way we punt, right? Until the Australians came over and made our game better with the they everybody called it rugby, which was a lie. It was bad marketing from day one. The commentators are calling it rugby. Other punters that were American that were trying to learn it from the Australians were calling it rugby. It wasn't rugby. It's actually Aussie rules nah. punting style. And by the way, as a commentator last year, I was 
very adamant about saying this Aussie rules punter as opposed to saying rugby punter because I think that's the first step in this becoming a, a sport that America loves because it feels as if this is a sport that America would love. I would like to be a guy, though, that would just may, may not run as much as everybody else, but just give me the rock, cuz. Let me hit a bomb into the blender <laughs> to my six foot eleven friend from Texas down there. <laughs> and let's go ahead and score. Can I score through those pipes from, like, way out in the middle of the field? Dude, score however you want, man. Like as long as you get it through them, it doesn't matter how how you do it. Can you like, handball as through? As long as it goes through there, you can. You, know, you have to kick it though. You can't handball. You have to. That's come off your shoe, and then I mean, you can kick it from 60, uh, 60 yards out, seventy yards out, however far you want. As long as it goes through there and no one touches it, goal six points. Okay, Mason. Uh, I, do you guys have any questions? For yeah. Me? Right, here we go. Coxie, uh, have you had any uh, roux? Have you had a bowl of roux yet? How about Vegemite? How about Vegemite, Cal? Yeah, like spaghetti uh, bowl roux. <laughs> yeah, Vegemite. Not massive on the Vegemite. Uh, you got spit, like my my advice: bit of butter, spread it thin. Uh, but one thing that is quite interesting is they actually sell kangaroo meat at a local uh, grocery store here. Come on, you can't do that. People eating bats, eating kangaroo, and then we got this thing going on. You know what I mean? It's like the only we're one of the only countries that actually eats our national animal. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what though. If my understanding is accurate, which is very little, kangaroo yeah. like your deer, right? Uh, it's about the same, yeah. It's just gaming. That's all it is. Yeah, they're real, just... Real strong, man. Those things, they'll punch each other and knock each other out, man. They're, they're insane. Yeah. yeah. And don't let those feet get up and hit you right in the face. Mm. They will kill you. Yeah. You don't want to mess with a kangaroo, man. And if you ever hit one with your car, it's just like a deer. That thing will total your car. Do you drive over there? You guys drive on the wrong side of the road over there? Uh, yeah, we drive on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. How about the toy? It takes about a week. It takes about a week to get used to, but you can, yeah, it's pretty easy. Is it like a video game? But just, you got to think like the driver's seat is on the other side of the car too. Yeah. So everything's flip flopped. And you turn right, which is your left. And it's, yeah, it's, it's all kind of backwards, man. Does the toilet go the opposite direction? <laughs> <laughs> I always get this question. No, it, uh, well, oh. I don't really know actually, because we have different toilets. So the toilet flush is different in Australia. It's not like a spin down or anything. It just like properly just shoves it down. It's, it's totally different. It saves water apparently. I'm not really 100% sure, but it's really European. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Okay. But they like America, so that's good. Yeah. They love Americans. I'm telling you. Well, check out your Twitter, man. They're going all over it. They love it. They're nuts I, for you. And by the way, I'd like to let all of Australia know I love them too. I mean, I don't have the accent yet like my guy Coxzilla here, but I'm going to try to pick it up soon. Stat. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, brother. Any other questions? Yeah, I got one. Here we go. Cogzilla, uh, since you're the only American in the league, do you take more <laughs> shit from, like, fans and stuff when you're playing or no? Um, yeah, 100%. Um, I actually enjoy it, though. There's oh. some people that really enjoy shit talking you know, really enjoy trash talk, and I'm one of those. Um, in, the same, in the same aspect, like, after I kick a goal, it's a very unique circumstance. People chant USA. The crowd is chanting USA as well. Uh. <laughs> Oh. So imagine like 80,000 people and people start chanting USA after you kick a goal. Bro, you're it's in the, you're in the Olympics phenomenal. every game? You're, you're in the Olympics every game. You're representing an entire yeah, country. I, I'm the only American that's you know reached this point. So every single time I have a kick, I'm breaking records, to be honest with you. Hey, let's keep it going. USA! 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 Australia, we're trying to win over. Oh, hey, good. US. Uh, yeah, no, there's trash talk, man. There's people that like sit right behind the goals. Uh, they're the cheer squad, which is like the most intense fans, and they talk as much trash and dribble as you can possibly imagine. And they're uh, they're the craziest of all the crazy fans, which get you in to sit with them. You learn quite a bit, and uh, yeah, they, they they talk as much trash as anyone else. And uh, yeah, it's it's quite funny, man. The whole the whole scenario is quite unique. I respect fanatics in any sport. Yeah. I like the people that they, have, they fly USA flags in the um, in the uh, cheer squad in the behind the goals. So you're a pretty notable player for the Collingwood Mad Magpies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to pump myself up by any means, but I'm the only American and I'm the tallest guy in the league, so it's kind of tough to miss, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're one of those yeah. guys who's so tall that your entire life people have just been staring at you. Now they're like, oh, that's a tall, handsome American guy that does our sport really good. That, that's Yeah, handsome probably, eh, but tall American, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> it's Coxzilla. Yeah, you're Coxzilla, like, dude. You do whatever you need to do. How often do you have to deal with, like uh... – Two foot spiders and scorpions yeah, and snakes that's a and question. stuff. Yeah, a lot, a lot of deathmobiles down there in Australia. Yeah, so you got, you got okay. So we got like 
three of the top five deadliest snakes in the world, yeah, I think. Yeah, but Steve Irwin. They're not really, like, they're all in proper middle of nowhere, like, up north towards the top of Australia. Oh, they're not the really in the cities and stuff. Like, I've never, I've only seen a brown snake, which is the, like, and that's only in the middle of, like, a forest or wherever it was. It was nothing near, uh, near the house by any means. But there's big things called huntsmen, and oh. these things are as big as your head. I'm telling you, they're spiders. Oh. They're ah. huge. They're massive, man. There's one story. One of the grocery stores here, you had this packaged lettuce, and there was a huntsman inside the packaged uh, lettuce. Oh, oh man. Oh, you gotta look at it. It's insane. Someone's actually packaged a huntsman into a package of lettuce. Does it look like a tarantula, or what's it look? Does it yeah, look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh. like a tarantula, but they're not, they're harmless. So they look mean and disgusting and everything else, but they don't really do anything. It looks much bigger than a tarantula. Well, yeah, he <laughs> said it's big, It's as big as your head. Like, I just didn't know what it, uh, pit, that, can you pull one of those up? Yeah. Can we pull a, a huntsman it's up? huge. Is it shredded lettuce? Somebody just tucked this in a shredded lettuce. I mean, that's unbelievable what's going on down it's, under. It's in, yeah, I, I don't know. It's like a spinach kind of package, and there's a huntsman just rolling around, just crawling through. Oh, it's insane, man. It's um, harmless. Makes me check twice every time I go to the store. Now. All right, let's, a, let's ask a couple more cliche Australian questions to our Australian American friend. Yeah. You guys drink Foster's? Uh, nah, not really. Unbelievable. Remember, that's, the one, that's the one thing people get wrong in Australia. We don't really drink Fosters, man. We've got different, we've got Aussie beers like Carlton and, and Coopers and stuff like that. That's um, more local, I guess. Uh, Fosters is just the international Bloomin' Onions oh. of Australia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys like Bloomin' Onions down there? Nah, we don't have Outback Steakhouse. Like, <laughs> we are Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Don't oh. ruin my dreams here. Um... <laughs> Here's a spider. It's not myself. Foster's is not a thing in Australia, and Bloomin' Onions is not caught on yet. Um, but I am a massive Bloomin' Onions fan. Hey man, how could you not be? I think it has four thousand calories in it. Here's the Huntsman right here. Yeah. Jesus, that thing is is painless right there. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't think it does anything. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm pretty sure. It's not Mason, pointless. stay away from the the tarantula that is big as your head over there. Okay, please. I'm trying to look out for you. Yeah. Well, they're not. You don't find too many of them down south. Like I said, they're all. They're on like the forest and up north towards the equator, man. I don't want to get into your personal business too much, but are you a wifed up man or are you just having a good time down there, single bachelor in the AFL? Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying myself uh, in Australia being an American overseas in a place full of beaches. And um, yeah, it, it, it goes well. It, it goes well. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the only American in the AFL, an absolute stud. And a guy that I, he's my favorite athlete on earth right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the Coxzilla makes a cock. Yeah! Coxzilla!